Uh, just doing a test for the speakers. We don't have a speaker on this computer. I want to make sure that uh, you can hear me okay on the sound. Just uh, double check that. Sound check, sound check. I think last week I had the big mic, but I think it was too far away, so it wasn't loud enough. Huh? Okay, test, 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 12.45. And the winner for the first $100 is? Oh, nobody got the right answer. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. So we survived. So do I have any bandwagon people here? You know what that means? <laughs> Everybody know what a bandwagon person is? Um, I love Toronto. No, nobody, nobody watched the Toronto Maple Leafs until they win the game. All of a sudden, everybody's a Maple Leaf fan. Oh, what, what was Ram? Okay. Oh, boy. Okay. So one of our guys was playing uh, pickup hockey, shinny hockey. There are normally, what, 10 people show up? Now there's 30, but everybody's all hyped about hockey right now. That's fun. Yeah. I was kind of hoping that. Uh, I'm still testing for the sound here. Anybody, anybody That's watching good. there? Yeah. Sounds okay. Uh, this is a little sound test we didn't know, but I was kind of hoping that Boston win last night because I want to see Toronto win, you know, beat the best, not the not the fourth best, right? But then again, 10 years from now, if somebody won the Stanley Cup, you don't know who they won it against anyway. So. All right. Don't get ahead of yourself. Still got two, two points. But... Yeah, we're okay. All right. Okay, so we've got about uh, about twenty people here right now. I'm not sure how many people at home. I was checking uh, last night there the the meeting that we had uh, last Wednesday there. We had like 165 people that uh, viewed the uh, the video itself, which is pretty strong. We normally it's about 100 or so, but it had like 165, so that's strong. Um, we had our event last Wednesday. I want to appreciate or thank everybody for showing up for that. Hopefully you enjoyed that. That was uh, the awards event. It was kind of interesting, different. So uh, we combined the kickoff with uh, David uh, Greenspan along with the awards. I think it uh, went, you know, went pretty smooth. Um, I think we finished right on time, 10 o'clock there, right? So I know that we told everybody to start at 10 o'clock and we had a bit of a mingling there and we started the show at 10.30. So I think overall it went, uh, went okay. I think the food was all right. Some people went to after after party to some other place there, and uh, but I think they they stayed out of trouble too, didn't they? Or did they? We're out of trouble. Some people. Nobody got <laughs> nobody got COVID or anything. So. They all picked up real estate clients. They all picked up real estate clients. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah knows my client. Um, one of the things that David talked about for those people that did not see the the first part of the show, David, I thought was pretty good. He's just talking about mindset. He was just positive energy things like that. that's all we're trying to do but one thing that you talked about here was the seven steps to boost your business and caitlin put it on to the uh i think certainly on instagram she put on facebook as well this list i think she did anyways anybody else, anybody else see that list that we that uh, we published it was just the summary of what david greenspan talked about right and just to just to recover uh, they're talking about here in person so he's saying here the challenges well okay He's saying, as I watch roller coaster of uh, marketing ideas spew in the next uh, spew at the next big thing. So as I watch the roller coaster of marketing ideas spew out the next best thing, I also watch how sales professionals flock in droves and follow like sheep to tap in new technology and help build their business. It's really important to state to right now through though there's all no, even though there's no magic pill, no secret answer. Instead, it's about hard work and dedication. So he's saying here that. There's all kinds of new new stuff out there. There's new programs, new flashy things, new shiny things. And that was, but as a real estate professional, you still have to stick to the basics. You still have to do the things that are easy, the things that, that are comfortable. So uh, you're saying here that your challenge is to meet one person, actually one new person a day for the next five days and add them to your database. Is that a hard thing to do? Anybody here? To, to meet one person a day and add them to your database? How, how would you do that? Any ideas? One new person per day and add them to your database. How would you do that? Hmm? Advertise for people. How, what's the other way? Talk to your database and get a friend. Get, get see if they recommend her brother, sister, or somebody else. Talk to somebody like that. Do an open house. Maybe you get to get lots of people at open houses. 
door knock, get somebody on that way, door knocking. I mean, the whole idea is one person new a day, right? So how is it, however works for you, that's that's the idea if you believe it, right? So that, that's, that's a simple thing to do. Text message. Send a text message to each of your active clients as a check-in each day. Keep them an update, see if they have any questions. These, these are people that are active right now. So keep in touch with them, text them, where they go. I was talking to an agent uh, some time ago there and he, he was he a uh, successful agent. He just he didn't want to have um, he didn't want to have a relationship with his clients. All he wanted to do was sell and buy real estate. He wanted to sell the house, close the house, shake a hand, have a nice life, move on to the next one. But of course, he still wanted to keep in touch with them. But he wanted to be known as the real estate professional, not the friend. You understand what I'm saying? So to get him to phone call people was difficult because he didn't, he didn't want to create that conversation. He didn't want to get that thing going. He didn't want to sort of say, well, yeah, what are you doing today? What are you doing for lunch? He didn't want to get involved in all that stuff. So what we had him do instead was text message everybody. He started doing text messages and it actually worked out far better than he thought it would. So if you're not the type of person that wants to phone and talk to people or you think too busy, then text messaging is a huge tool as well. So consider doing that and have some type of, uh, of method. I would one text message day, two, five, 10, whatever it might be, right? He says, by phone, call three or five people by phone on your contact list each uh, each day for the next five days. Note uh, note those calls in your CRM. Be sure to schedule your next follow-up day. So phone three or five people a day. So that, that's not too hard either, right? Email. Schedule to send out two email blasts to your contact list this month. Does everybody know how to send out an email blast to your database? That's a simple thing, right? And just uh, You can personalize it, not personalize it. You can make it a general. You can do what you want. That, that, that shouldn't be too hard. Social media, he talked about social media, which usually scares a lot of people that aren't into social media. Social media is not the and be all. Social media is not the, you know, some of our top agents in this office, for instance, they don't have any social media presence at all. So it's not a big thing, but if, if you're into that game and you can do it and you're comfortable with it, then it's definitely a tool that you want to use. But if you're not, not using it, it's not like you're doing without. All right. Direct mail. I talked to somebody the other day who sends, um, he's got his CRM, he's got his database, he sends out stuff to his clients all the time. He's uh, uh, emailing this and emailing that, emailing this. And I said to him, well, how often do you mail them something? Like, what do they call it, snail mail? He looked at me like, what are you talking about? He says, well, how often do you send out like a, a written, like a, a newsletter or a letter? How often do you mail something to the house? Should that not be part of the part of the routine here? You guys, you guys mail stuff to people and, and, and the reason why it's important i email you guys stuff right and i get tracked so I'll, I'll email out like 400 people and say okay have a look at this what it might be you guys know me i send you the email you know me and if i have a 40 percent open rate i'm happy so if you guys send out to your database you get a, a 10 percent open rate would that be would that be okay or not good or be yeah. bad right but what has anybody done who's has anybody actually checked the open rate of your emails that you send your clients what's what's the what's the open rate 10 to 15 percent so so what i said to this person that's why you got to send direct mail on top of all this email stuff and all this other stuff because people even though you're sending it and you think that you're sending stuff they're not looking at it anyways but in defense i wouldn't expect them to read it. all i really want them to see is your name anyways I really don't care what the newsletter says. I just wanted to see your name because they're not thinking about real estate right now, but they might be next year. At least they got your name. So it's not useless, but at the same time, with the 10% open rate, maybe you want to consider mailing something once a year, twice a year, every month, something, right? And there's companies out there that uh, David didn't talk about. We still got a company called Kits. There's other companies called TMS or, or yeah, DMS. And um, who's the one that a lot of guys use? Morris Marketing. All these guys, all you have to do is give them your, your email address, your mailing address, and these guys mail it out for you every month. It's done. So it's not like a big deal. It's just a, just a signature on a piece of paper called a check, right? So that's something to think about, right? Uh, online, review your website. Have you, have you looked at your website lately? Have you looked at it? Not you guys, but some agents you'll notice, I'm sure, still use their high school photographs, right? <laughs> No, so have a look at your web page. Is it current? And other people, you guys do it yourself, do you not? If you guys, if you guys look for something, don't you Google it first? All right. So, if, so if they're going to hire you, are they going to Google you? What are they going to see? And is it consistent? Is it consistent? Right. That's all. Those, those are sort of the things that he talked about. 
Now on Wednesday, we have a, another special uh, uh, trainer, not trainer, what he's doing. We don't know what he's selling, quite frankly, but this guy here is called, uh, it's Andrew. Oh man, I can't pronounce that. Here, where's the, uh, pronounce this for me. Excuse my international translator. <laughs> pronounce this guy's name. Fogliato. Is that good? Anyway, he's a he's a young guy there. He's uh, he's, he's gonna be talking about uh, um, building a marketing strategy that works for real estate agents. He this fellow here is actually quite successful, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe that he purchased the Rem magazine. I mean, Rem magazine, REM magazine. Does everybody watch that? Yeah. It's, a, it's a good little magazine if you want to just get up to date on on what's going on in the real estate industry itself. And uh, apparently he's he's got some involvement with those guys, but he's going to do a bit of a talk just for us. It's not a it's not a webinar. It's not a uh, a tape thing. And I don't think he's going to try to sell you anything either. I think, he's, I think he might just try to get you to go to his news, newspaper, maybe. Anyways, he's going to be doing um, with just sold just sell homes upcoming seminar. The expert in real estate industry has countless businesses businesses grow their online presence. So that's what we're doing on Wednesday. So have a look at that. That's uh, Wednesday at 11.30. On, we'll, we'll send you more information on that, but that's going to happen on Wednesday. Uh, market stats or other things? Market stats or trip? What do you, want? What do you prefer? Market stats. OK, the good news or the bad news? Bad news. Nobody wants bad news. I have, all I have is good news. Bad news sells. All I have is good news. Sales. So, so the month's over. So it's May 1st already. So these numbers I have are preliminary. These are my numbers, but they should be pretty close to what Treb's going to announce probably in another three or four days. But right now we've got 10,834 active listings. So it's hung around that 10,300, 10,600. It's been around that range now for the last three or four or five weeks. So I think what's happening is that we're, whatever's coming to the market that we're selling. All right, and that, that's what's happening there too. So we've got, um, just so you know, back in 2022, sorry, 2021, 2021 would have been the best year in the history of real estate. Is that true? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's true, right? Yeah, it was because, and then, and, it's, and then February 22 was supposed to take off and it died, right? Anyway, so back then we had, uh, eight, we had about 12,000 sales back in April of 2021. April 22, we had 7,900. So it was already down about 30%. April this year, we got 7,400. So we're actually only down 6% from April of last year. So that's the good news. So I've been talking about minus 49, minus 36, minus 18, now it's minus six. So hopefully May, we're gonna start breaking the other way. Now it's no, it's no, you know, during the peak, we had like again 12,000 sales, still doing 7,000. So we're ne nowhere near the way we were, but it's certainly better than minus 30 or 40, 50%. Right. So that's the positive thing. Months of inventory is 1.46. Everybody remembers the month of inventory between a buyer's market and seller's market, they say it's about four to one. So we're still at 1.46 months of inventory. So it's still a seller's market. But what's holding prices back in the seller's market is that nobody qualifies based on the higher interest rates. So the buyers are pretty much topped out. Does that make sense? So we're not seeing the, the, the price increase, the price that we had in, in uh, last year, but it's okay. All, all we're concerned about ourselves is volume. So I want to make sure we have volume. On the freehold side, we have 4,500 sales. Last year we had 4,900, so they're minus 8.5%. Condominiums, for some reason, condominiums are just slowing right down. Does anybody have any condos for sale downtown? Nobody here? No? I know, I know that market has dropped off a little bit. I don't know why. It seems very, very, very quiet. But their sales are, are uh, minus 9%. Is it good right here? I'm sorry? Is it good right here? No. 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 Pre-condos. So resales, really weird. Resales, like we've got, I've got my own personal place for, for sale right now. I think I have one showing that was it in the week. A famous, a, famous, a famous guy said once, <laughs> once if you can't you can't you can't change the interest rates you can't change the location you can't change the floor
Okay, just use a hotspot. So, yeah. all right. So, Aiden, Aiden's talking about um, new construction going crazy, and I've got one here, Unionville. Did anybody get involved? You involved with the Unionville one? Yeah. Okay. So there's. It's called uh, Metropia. It's called uh, Union City, which is Unionville. And they just had two towers that they released, and two towers of many, and there was 850 condos in this uh, in these two buildings, and they sold out in six days. So it's your six the, days. The there's there's two units, so so six days. Okay. So why is that? So what, what are the prices? Twelve fifty square foot. Twelve fifty square foot seems high for suburbs. Sixteen hundred dollars for studio. No, the only thing I read there is that it's in walking distance to the new school. From York, but it's not a major campus. There's there's a, a new the, yeah. There's a small York York University campus that's going to be built there, and it's walking distance to that. And it's also walking distance to the uh, to the LRT for uh, Unionville yeah. and Markham, and it's also the GO station, right? What's the main section? Main I'm not sure. Main se where's the main Perfect. section? Unionville. So it's got to be Kennedy and Highway Seven. Kennedy and Seven. Kennedy and Seven. Yeah. It's probably on seven, probably. Yeah. It's near. It's near that cousins school. I think it's a walking distance to cousins. Cousins, I think it's a. It's a isn't that a sports? Sports. It's a sports school for high high performance athletes, high performance kids, right? Yeah. Anyway, so sixteen hundred dollars a square foot for that seems pretty high for a I semi mean, twelve fifty seems high for. A, that has always kind of been like downtown pricing, though. Major Chinese buyer. Mm -hmm. But even in general, I feel like the prices are always similar to downtown. But so let's talk about pre-construction. So overall, who's who's buying pre-construction? Investing. 60, almost 60, 70 percent. Okay, so let me rephrase that. So are these like local investors or local. foreign investors? No, no. Foreign ones can't buy. Work permit, yes. I don't know. Can, can foreign investors buy pre plan? Because they're, they're no, not going. No, they're, they're not going to close for five years. Buying it under different name. Yeah. So I don't know. Are these all the speculators, or I don't know. Well, would you guys? Okay, who would you guys buy it? Did you buy it? I did. Sixteen hundred dollars. Really? Okay. So there you go. All right. So I guess you have to believe in the product, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Church and uh, Richmond Hall. So this has been an interesting information. So we did, so Toronto came up with that Toronto vacancy tax, right? And, we, and uh, they're basing it on the model that they're in BC. This kind of goes goes in hand to hand with the pre-construction, but um, they're expecting to have 1%, I think in Vancouver had like 1% vacancy rate. They're expecting Toronto to have a 1% vacancy rate. In, in the city of Toronto, there are about 800,000 houses or condos or units, right? There's about 800,000 dwellings. They're expecting one percent, or expecting eight thousand to be vacant, right? Turns out they're twenty one hundred. So whatever it costs them to do the the paperwork and send out the mailings and and to hire somebody to do all these things and all the lawyer stuff, whatever else, I think they lost money in this whole deal. Right? So Toronto is not like Vancouver. Vancouver be people would buy Vancouver condos. They buy the the whole building, leave it empty. Like they, there's almost like a they're true investors or speculators, or land banks, whatever they're calling, right? But in Toronto, we don't see that much. So twenty one hundred out of the whole group. Did you see some other cities? Vancouver, but Vancouver had like a two percent vacancy rate. Uh, Hamilton, no vacancy rate, no vacancy. No, I meant, uh, foreigners can't buy in Ontario. Well, we're talking about vacant empty units right now, right? Anyway, so that's it. And what they did, just so you know, I, I was I wasn't sure how they're going to do this, but now a little clarity. If somebody said that uh, my house is vacant, my condo is vacant, then 
then the date they had to do that was uh, what the end of February. Is that the deadline where the deadline was? And those people that declared that the places were not vacant, that were sort of were vacant, they've already sent them the tax bill. So those people already had the tax bill. I thought they were going to wait till the following year and add it to the tax bill, but it's a separate bill. So they've got a special assessment tax bill already. Those guys are already on it. So that's that. I don't know. I had this call here. Just, uh, just I guess I have to say this for the old folks versus the new folks. It used to be some time ago that if you had a divorced couple and you had, the, let's say, one spouse was living in the in the house, the other spouse was out and about. So the old days, we'd be able to get the listing from the person that was living in the house. And then when we get the offer, we try to get the spouse to sign it as well, but we at least take the listing to process the process the paperwork and get things rolling. Remember we used to do that and look at the old guys. But the new rules have changed nowadays that you have to have both people sign every time. You can't take a listing of two people on it and only one person signs it. So you gotta get them both to sign. Just just if it's well, it depends who owns it, right? If if they own each own it, then that's fine. Spousal consent, then they have to sign spousal consent. But just be a little bit careful on that. And then the question here that I got last week and uh, they happen to talk about here too is, too, can somebody hire two separate agents to, to represent? So you got Mr. and Mrs. each have their own agent. Can you hire two different agents to sell one house? You can. Can you? That's my question. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Why not? I like you. What about a lawyer like me? What about what do we do it together? So what I told the agent to tell their clients, look, just pick one agent because at the end of the day, there can only be one listing broker that books the appointments. There can only be one sign on the property. There can only be one person to contact for showings or questions. So if somebody has to take the lead and that lead person is going to do everything. So the, almost the best way to tell your clients, look, let me hire all the paperwork. You guys each have your own, your own lawyers. When you get offers or make a conditional upon each of your lawyers, each you go to your lawyers and discuss it and then come back to us. But no sense getting two agents doing the jobs of the two lawyers. You're already paying the lawyers to do it anyway. So that'd be my objection to handle for that. So what about the lawyer? It's, it's not it's not a, a, lawyer, a divorce case, but it's a, it's a like it's a, a boyfriend, girlfriend, they live, they live living together. What about the lawyers? Do they have to hire two lawyers or one lawyer? Uh, if they're if they're separating, yeah, I would think they'd want each other own lawyer. Yeah. yeah, but they don't really have to do it. I mean, it depends how it depends how bad it is, right? right? Most people that were saying if they want to save some money, they just do it and not you know, just share the money instead of the fight. But life's life's not like that, right? Yeah. Okay, so Bill's saying here that on the power sale, you can sometimes have two listings. You have one, one under the bank and one under the owner. Yeah, you, you can do it, except there's a problem now too, that uh, once the, once the um, bank taken possession of the property, then the current owner has no access to property and he can't show it. So if I'm an agent and I've got a buyer and I've got one of these situations, I'm going with the bank, I'm not going with the owner. You know what I mean? Because the owner has, the, the bank has the keys and the, the owner's gone. And they have the right to redeem, but they don't have the right to advertise in MLS once they've taken the keys over. So it's a little more complicated than the, what it used to be. So you have to almost check, double check and see what stage it's at. So. You can co-list, but there's only one sign and there's only one listing agent. And in the body of the broker's remarks, you say co-listed with Joe Blow. But it doesn't mean anything. It's just it doesn't mean a thing because it's because you the listing agent's doing all the work. And maybe the buying agent's paying for marketing, but but you figure, okay, if you if you market a property, right? Let's say let's say you have two agents, you're gonna market the property. 
when you market a property, you advertise, do you advertise to sell that property or do you advertise to get clients? So why would I, so that's the question. Do you advertise the property to sell the property? Or do we advertise the property to get clients? That's, 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 that's a question. What's the answer? What's the answer? No, let me finish this, this point here. So let me, because I've had other people that have done this. They've, they've gone joint. Let's say some guy in London or someplace there, and the guy in London has made our guy pay thousands of dollars for his marketing to sell what? To sell that property or to get clients for him? No, 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 you're, you're, no. MLS sells a property. You, you, average, you advertise a property to get more clients. Am I am I am I off? Am I off, am I off, am I off stage here? No, you're right. You you don't. Right. Am I right? You're right. Yes. How it's many people in this years. room have we have double end deals? If we do a thousand deals, how many of those deals are double end? One. Right. So when anybody's advertising, like and that's why I say it's hard to have two people co list and co co advertise the the market expenses because it's somebody's going to benefit and if they are going to benefit, you want to make sure it's you so if, so if you want somebody else to pay for your marketing fee that's great but don't you pay for this everybody following what i'm saying there okay good okay you've got a nine hundred and forty nine thousand dollar bungalow would you put a second story on it this is this is this is the property would you pay nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars for this property and put a second story on it and expect to make a profit? It's in Toronto. It's in Toronto. Oh, it's the house. Is it Malton? You'd have to. Well, no, they say an add a second no, story to it. What's the size? Standard Scarborough bungalow, so it's fifty foot by one hundred and ten. That's not fifty feet, is it? No, no. That's a thirty-five to forty. Feet. Thirty-five by forty feet. Thirty-five. <laughs> Mount Dennis. <laughs> Uh, Rutherford Avenue. No, that's a hard one, eh? Uh, new houses have plummeted, so it's funny. We're talking about condominiums taking off, and now new houses have plummeted. New houses sales for uh, as of last month, they're down. Oh man, by seventy percent. These are new homes, right? But are, is there that many new homes? There? There's not. So on uh, new home sales, there's only about twelve hundred seventy-seven homes that were purchased, staggering seventy percent below last year. On the condominium side, condominiums were actually down. Actually, they only sold 900 units, so they're down actually 73 percent for condos. Just recently, they've gone up. I know. So this is March. So we're talking about April. So you see how fast things change. So this is this is built being on the built new home builders association on March sales being down 73 percent, and now all of a sudden April's come along, and now we picked up just like resale. Resale, we were down. 37% now we're down 6%. So so we just said here that they, these guys sold 800 units, but that was that was Unionville. I'm talking about Toronto. This is 416. So, so many different things, right? I just I just see something here. I've heard of Bull Valley, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Condo rents have climbed 15%. Downtown condo. So you may notice that, that have, the rents have gone up downtown. Yeah. Rents have gone up downtown. Are there multiples still? There, there were some multiples on some rentals too, but not so much. Yours is just sitting. But they are saying here that the condo prices will increase this year. New report. Uh, they're saying that that um, so they are expecting new. They are expecting condo sales to go up there. This is according to new report from Treb. Um, condo apartment sellings were uh, were eleven point four percent lower than the first quarter of last year. They're talking about the quarter. So the first quarter twenty three was lower than the first quarter twenty two by eleven percent. Uh, but because of the population growth, uh, for first time buyers with new growth, they're expecting things to increase. So. Prices themselves were actually for the first quarter, 23 were 726 compared to the first quarter last year, 809. So we're actually down about uh, about 80, almost about $70,000 down average price for condos. Surprise.
They're starting to build uh, condominiums again. I just did this. This is, this is for fun. You guys won't be able to see this at all, but this is the CN Tower. This is the, the, the height of the CN Tower versus the other buildings in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And the next highest building is going to be Sky Tower. And the peak of Sky Tower just touches the restaurant part of the CN Tower. Yeah, the Sky Tower. This is Sky. This is Sky Tower. It's right down at uh, One Young Street, right? right? And so the top of that just almost touches the restaurant level of, of the CN Tower. The one at Bloor, it also is a little bit less than uh, than that. It also touches the uh, the top of it. So there's going to be some big places there. There's a former West Tower. I don't know where that is. It is 82 stories. The ones in uh, Unionville, I thought they were 80 stories, weren't they? They're huge. Okay, so is that right? Is Unionville? No, no, is it, that, that's not 80. No, it's got to be like 60 or something. It can't be. 80. No, that's that's. So the big ones in Toronto would be uh, 101 Bay Street, 15 Bloor Street, Union Park. 60 stories. The one Young Street, 92 stories. Well, there were two units, the two buildings, they were competing with each other, right? They were yeah, the the floor. Floor. yeah, there's, there's one, one, number one Young Street phase three is going to be 92 stories. I'm not sure where that is. Number one, I don't know where that is. Yeah, it's huge. Does so anybody have any clients yet? They're having issues with pre construction and with qualifying to, to purchase. Anybody seen that yet? Because they're saying that the, with the increase in the, in the interest rates and uh, the assessed value of the properties, they've got the double dipper going on. So the properties are not assessing and the interest rates have gone up. So the buyers are, uh, our buyers are having a situation trying to close. We've got one, one hand up here that is having issues. Nobody else yet? I'm surprised we haven't had more. <clears throat> Come on, a couple more here and there. So, so, so here's a typical example. So, like Korea, for instance, I don't know, it's weird. Eh? Korea doesn't, okay, I'll get into this here later on, but Korea won't let us do exclusive listings. So, you got a pre construction that the builder won't allow you to advertise, and Korea doesn't want you to do MLS listings. Like how, there's a typical example of how, what a stupid rule it is. How would you do that? Right? Everybody know what I'm talking about, the new rule? You're not allowed to advertise properties. No, sorry. Once you advertise a property to the public, it has to be an MLS in three days. So how would you advertise a pre-construction guy like a guy that's struggling? I don't know. You have to get more so details. you have an email database? Maybe. Do that. Do that. Is that? Email database. You're not allowed to not allowed to, to the public. You can email to other brokers, but not to the public. Right? Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll do till so then. You won't be able to, when, is that, when does that apply? It's effective. Uh, the thing I read says effective January 1st, 2023, <clears throat> but I think in February or January 1st, 2023 is already gone. So, 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 so it's got to be this year. No. You Not can, anymore? No, can, as we speak today, yes, we're waiting for a trip. So Korea, Korea voted last week to uh okay let's get into it then all right so korea korea came up with the idea and korea being canada right not just toronto so right across canada so there must be something going on in other cities that people don't like like these coming soon signs or something so what they're saying here is that effective i want to say january 1st 24 i think it was a typo for 23 we won't be allowed to advertise exclusive listings to anybody other than people in the office and other realtors one-on-one -on -one. We won't be able to advertise it to the public without putting on MLS in three days. So you'd be able to advertise it, but you gotta put it on MLS in three days. They came out with the rules and they're expecting the, each real estate board to come up with their own rules to tell the tell us what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to do it. So we're still waiting for those for that information, but Korea's decided, yes, we're gonna do it and they voted on it. Now it's up to the individual boards to tell us what, what to do and how to do it. So it's coming down the tubes, but- Does not, the board have the right to say no? They said yes. What? They said yes. Yeah. 
The Calgary board said no. Toronto Real Estate Board said yes. That makes sense. I guess so. There got to be some exception, like let's say one million dollars. Yeah. Yeah, there's got to be something going on there. Right? So I'm saying there must be some exception. There should be. Um. Okay, I'm gonna get into Trump stuff then while I'm while I'm here. So. Um, actually, one more condo thing. There's a condominium on Keel Street, 3374 uh, Keel. They previously had approval to build uh, 20 some odd stories. Sorry, 12 stories. But when the government came in with the, with the uh, Trust and Real Estate Act and they're trying to make things quicker and trying to make things faster and trying to build more houses, they allowed these guys to do an application. They changed the 12 stories to 29 stories. <laughs> so so if you're if you're a stockholder for that builder you'd be doing pretty well right because you, you've already paid for the land now you know you're doubling up on the sale so that's not a bad bad deal huh that's good okay mandatory fields uh, i've got a bunch of trail stuff here i'm gonna just do it randomly but um effective today no nope, effective yeah may 1st right is it may 1st or may 2nd first. May the first. So effective today, the, the ad edit is, is changed, right? So the ad edit's changed. So it's gonna be a little more detailed. I haven't, we've sent Joanne, Joanne did some training. There's some webinars and whatnot, but I don't think it could be any difference. It's gonna be ad edit, just gonna to have to access it from a different area. So when you do ad edit, if you happen to do that, then, uh, then you're gonna be doing it through Realm or through Matrix, not necessarily through Stratus. So any changes you wanna make. Now, also effective tomorrow, any new listings that you're entering, this mandatory field will be, will be the PIN number. So you're going to have to tell us what the PIN number is. If, if we're broken loading, you're broken loading. When you, do, when you do the new ad edit, yeah. get it on Geo Warehouse. And the way it'll work on the new ad edit, once you put the PIN number in there, it's going to auto-populate your, uh, your broker load with the information it can from Geo Warehouse. Okay, so it's going to auto populate. So that's, that's sort of the, 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 the thing. I'm also thinking in the future, uh, hopefully, when you press Jira Warehouse on a listing that you're looking at, it's going to take you to Jira Warehouse. Right now, it takes you nowhere, unless you're lucky and it takes you to the listing. But more times than not, it takes you nowhere, right? And then you have to put the address in again. Is anybody else experiencing that same, the same issue? So that's starting tomorrow. Starting June 1st. The room sizes are going to be mandatory, and it's up to the listing agent to measure the properties and put in the room dimensions. Now, Caitlin did a Caitlin, Caitlin did a little story on Instagram about a month or two ago, and it said how to how to measure a home. It's just a little quick little thing on how to measure a house. She had more hits on that than she had on a lot of other Instagram stuff. So I forget how many she had, but it was quite a few. How many agents here, nobody put up their hand, please. How many agents here take the dimensions that someone else put on the listing when it's previously listed and put that on their new listing? Nobody does, thank you. <laughs> because, <laughs> because if you go to court, you go to court or you go to, go to ethics and you, and you tell the panel, oh, I just copied it from the previous agent. You can't blame me, you gotta blame them. They look at you like they're stupid. <laughs> so you're supposed to measure the house yourselves, right? And you can't put it on there. You can't put it in there that the buyer and the buyer rep are to verify dimensions. That, that, that never worked and never did work and it never will work. But anyways, it's going to be mandatory. So that's that's a good thing. Right? That's, too many without any that's right. And that's because I don't know why. Let's get what you do. Uh, who knows why. The other thing they're going to make mandatory on July 1st is the square footage. And this makes sense to me because we can't get square footage on, you know, approximate square footage. We can't get it on impact anymore. And it's, there's nothing there. You can pay the $5. But other than that, it's not there. And it says here that Trev, in the meantime, is going to try to give us some type of um, source that we can use to put square footage on. So Trev says they're going to, they're trying to do something to make that happen. So we'll see what's going on so those are good things right i think square footage is, is that an exact square footage or the range? don't know it doesn't tell me that i, I can't imagine it being exact because that, that then if you make i don't know if you put a range you don't get yourself in legal problems right 
not exactly from impact, right? It's just sad, but that's not an I don't know. I mean, if you if you go to impact or you go to anywhere else, you anybody knows the spelling errors? I mean, like you put in a property like one two three John Street, and then they spell John with an A instead of an O, and then they make a mistake on Jerry House. It happens quite often. I can see them making a mistake with square footage as well. So I'm not sure where it would come from. Everybody here know how to measure square footage on the? Yeah, just go to measure their rooms. No, I can't measure I'm rooms. Measure can't measure rooms. Um, Gotta measure the outside walls. Gotta measure the outside walls. Outside walls. Yeah. Um, questions? Yeah. Yeah. There is this as well. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Um, sure, okay, that's fine. Um, Realtor Quest is coming up on. Okay, I'll stick the trip. Realtor Quest is coming up on May the 17th and 18th. There's an app that you can sign up for, for uh, Realtor Quest. You can go to that. You can also, on May the 17th, you can also go to the TREB uh, annual meeting. That will be on the 17th. Starts at uh, 8.30, starts at 9.30. So they're going to do it at the same time as they're doing Realtor Quest. You've got Realtor Quest at, uh, I assume it's the same area, on uh, Dixon Road is in the Congress Center. Is that where Realtor Quest is? And they're doing the meeting here at the same time. So they're going to, they're going to do a bunch of stuff. The main thing that they're going to talk about that they want to vote on, if you're interested, is your real estate dues. So what they want to do Right now, with your dues, you've had you've had a uh, holiday now. Let's call it a holiday. You've had the holiday dues now for the last couple of years, where they've reduced the fees by what fifty dollars a month or seventy five dollars a month. Whatever they've done, they've reduced them. What they want to do is add to the bylaws. They're not saying that they're going to increase the rates, but what they want to do is add a cost of living um, clause to the dues, so that they want to be able to increase the dues by the cost of living every year without. You know, they want to make it like a, a formula instead of having to be a big thing. They still want to be able to vote on it. So the board directors still have to agree to do it or not do it. So it's not like it's going to be automatic, but they want to be able to put it in place so it's there. So that's what they're going to be voting for. So if you're interested in going and you want to vote, you can vote. You can also vote by proxy if you like. Proxies have to be in by the 15th of the month. That means you get, you get somebody else, I guess, to write the vote for you if you do that. Uh, any thoughts on that? Increasing your dues? Not even like you cap it. Yeah, seriously. Oh, Trevor Noah doesn't just come to a real trip. Like, in the hall, yeah. Whatever happened to that, you know, just by the cost of the day. Okay, just, just not, not to be political here, but if you guys want to vote, that's good. You should vote, vote whether or not you want to do it or not. Uh, I have my own personal opinions, but um, in the in the packages last year's uh, financial statements, I'm sure everybody read that, right? Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> do anybody read that? The, no. So, good news, bad. News. I'll give you the bad news first. So, last year, for the full year, ending June 30th, 2022, they had a profit of five million dollars. Profit. Profit. You got the money. And but for the first six months of this year, we have a negative of two thousand dollars. But they haven't they haven't included the dues apparently, so we still probably be up about five million dollars or so. So they are making profit. Right? If they have in the bank, um, in the bank they have uh, cash as of December thirty uh, December thirty first, twenty twenty two. They have $36 million in cash. They have $72 million in short-term investments. They have accounts receivable, 200 grand, 72 million. So they have total cash of $112 million. Long-term investments, property, blah, blah, blah. They've got assets of about, 100, uh, about 28, $128 million of assets. They've got about $86,000 in liabilities. So they've got $42 million in cash. So what do you do with this money? <laughs> I think they should get rid of realtor request. I think they should get rid of everything and just, uh, yeah, just just reduce everything down. Who who here is going to realtor request? 
Four of those is revenue. One, two. So what are we got? Like 5%, 10%? Right? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So the voting's on the uh, 17th, if you, what do you want to do? I'm not saying they're going to increase it, but they have the, they're putting it in place that they can increase if they like. It's online, right? Uh, vote online, I don't know. Where do you think it? Beans, beans at that, uh, it's probably online as well. Well, they're going to go to Vegas and they're going to have a room for $5,000 a night. Sure, they're going to increase The other thing that they're talking about is in Ontario, should there be a, they have, this has not been ruled, but it's just something coming down the, the tubes. Right now, if you buy a new condominium, you have a 10 day cooling off period. What they want to do is they want to add brand new freeholds as well to that 10 day cooling off period. Yeah, that, makes sense. that makes sense? Yeah. And then now they're talking about they want to add three days conditional period on resales. But you can't waive it. You can't waive it. So firm on the They haven't done it. They haven't done it, but they're talking about it. So in BC, they have done it. In British Columbia, British Columbia, even if it's a firm deal, all deals, all deals in British Columbia are conditional for three days, cooling off period. Oh, brand, new. brand new resale no resale 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 no, 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 questions, resale? Asked. no, no questions asked just like no. a condo oh. but it's resale yeah but just like condo they have 10 days same thing no. resale. 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 This, is resale. 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 this is resale but in bc in bc <laughs> they have to pay a penalty in bc they have to pay a, in bc they have to pay a penalty so if that guy does buy it and he walks out he has to pay a penalty that represents about I think it's about $2,500. It's a percentage. 0.25% of the home purchase price. So that's a little bit more. So that's that's 25. That's a million dollar, 25. 20, yeah, it's point, yeah, so it's yeah, $2,500 for a million. Okay, so it's 0.25 in BC. But what they're saying here, the problem in Ontario, what they're speculating, the reason why they don't want it is because a lot of times you're going to get these speculators who go around and, and uh, put put all multiple offers on different properties and they win, then they pay the 2500 bucks yeah. and walk away. They're saying it's not very good for the seller trying to have to remarket the property, put it back on there and start it all over again. So so they don't, they don't necessarily think it's a good idea in Ontario, but BC they thought it was. In BC, this is something that you can't wave on your own? No, you can't wave it. You cannot not, not 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 wait it. <laughs> so that's coming down the tubes. Another thing that they're talking about here is the stress test. So no, it's not definite. No, they're going up for consultation, and people are arguing. So people will, will they'll they'll argue it through. The other thing that they're arguing about, just just so you know, and you got to sort of you know, if you're talking to MP, if you're political at all, or you're talking to anybody that's thinking about getting into politics, or else. CMAC. CMAC was originally developed to help people buy houses. The idea was for them to help the people to, I guess, from the war or else. I mean, they helped them buy houses, they helped them get into the business, they helped them come in with high ratio mortgages, insured mortgages, so they could put like 5% down. They did it to help buyers buy properties. That was the whole purpose of CMAC. Abe's down there. Abe worked for CMAC. Is that, was that not their motive? Their motive was to make affordability for the average Joe? Now the same people want to change the stress test. They're saying the stress test should be stronger. They want to add two other components to being qualified. They want to make sure that you have a loan to value ratio of, of not more than X amount. And they want to make sure that the debt service ratio is not more than a certain amount. So they're trying to add these extra things to make it harder for people to qualify. So again, same thing. I don't know whether it's going to shake down or not shake down, but why am I telling you this stuff here? You got a buyer sitting on the fence. I want to wait for the mortgage. I want to wait. I want to wait. What do you want to wait for? If, if, if they enact this type of thing, then you'll be waiting for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Right? So there's a reason why I'm telling you that nothing, nothing's come down the tooth, but if it did come down, then your buyer's not going to be in the same position next month than he is today. So you're telling me, you got anybody have clients that want to wait? You got buyers that want to wait? So, so these are types of things you want to talk about, right? Interest rates might change. They might change the stress test. They might change these qualifying. So will it happen? I don't know. 
But if it did happen, it wouldn't be good for you. So if you want to do something, you might want to do it sooner than later. Um, going back to the exclusive listings, this is the person that says it's been talking about it. Uh, I guess they, they work for Korea. Exclusives are still allowed. So you still be able, you can still take exclusive listings, but you just can't advertise it. That's what they're saying. They're saying they do this in the States too. I didn't know that. The States have been doing this for a while. Um, in the States, they have one day. Once you put, once you put it on, on public uh, marketing, you have one day to put an MLS. We have three days. We have three days. So they're saying it's a good idea. They're saying everybody's doing it. They're saying it's, it's all that. I don't know. I, I'd be concerned that, uh, well, I was reading this thing this morning about this uh, ICI world. Anybody do commercial stuff, ICI world? ICA World is a uh, it's a commercial real estate website full of exclusive listings. So why wouldn't somebody just create a and this guy? And ICA World is not they're not licensed. They're not they're not realtors. It's just some some IC guy that's, that's uh, selling his space on his website to advertise exclusive listings. <clears throat> so why couldn't somebody do that with residential? Not not be part of Korea. It's going to be that way. Regardless. I mean, like, like Korea is trying to, trying to be transparent. They're trying to be transparent on one side, and they're trying to be protectionist on another. So, so they're going to create themselves as a website, and they're going to sell it to us. That could be. <laughs> <laughs> that could be, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, add, add. Uh, everybody knows selling. We've had this conversation, Elsa and I. Selling a property that have basement apartments. Would you would you guys list a property that has an illegal basement apartment on MLS? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. List for lease an illegal basement apartment. Uh, no. Don't. I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting don't do it. All right, because I don't think uh, Rico would want you to advertise and stuff that's not legal. Well, you have to disclose that it's not legal uh, apartment, right? Uh, I'm talking about leasing, not selling. Yeah, I know. But even even leasing the place, you got to tell them it's not legal, so they get kicked yeah. out at any time, right? Can you list it if it's not legal? That's what I'm saying. I wouldn't. But if you disclose it, can't you can't break the law, right? No, you're not supposed to, right? Okay, now I guess the last thing I want to talk about here would be again, it's nothing's this this stuff's all coming in the future. So the, the Trust and Real Estate Act phase two and phase three, they've delayed it. So these things aren't in effect just yet. But when they come into effect, you might as well be ready for it. <clears throat> phase three is it's gonna allow us to disclose contents of existing offers. Now I'm trying to figure out Sky Slope. I haven't looked into Sky Slope yet. I don't know whether Sky Slope has a, an option on there where you can do this or not. But I've looked at this open offer. I did a little webinar and I looked at the at the uh, webinar that they gave us, uh, the little recording of it. Did you guys look at? It? Did you look at it? So make sure I don't forget anything. Then. So the way this program works is connected to Realtor.ca. It's called Open Offers. And if you're the if you're the listing agent and you've you've subscribed to this this company then you have control you're the controller you're control of, of these open offers and in the future if somebody wants to put an offer in on your property they're going to go through realtor.ca of all places i guess they're going to log in with their member number and they're going to upload any offers that they have for your listing they're going to upload it onto this platform and then from this platform you as an agent are going to determine with your client, what information can be disclosed to the public? So no information, maybe just the price information, maybe the price and the and the closing date information, maybe the price, the down payment, conditions, no conditions. Uh, the only thing you won't be able to disclose is who the agent is or who the buyer is but you can disclose as much or as little information that you want to give. As you set it up, the agent that's put in offer and all these and put in offers, they'll look at a different dashboard that, you, that you're looking at. The dashboard they look at 
you can again manipulate it and you can say, actually, I guess you can put the agent name in. So you can actually, in this case here, I'll show you here quickly. So I just have, just, I don't know, you can't see it, but you get the idea. It's just a, just a line of information, right? So in there, it's got the number. So everybody has a number, so they get an idea. Agent's name, it's got the offer price, closing date, deposit, offer expiration. And it shows what this guy's offer is. And it shows the next guy's offer, next guy's offer, next guy's offer. Including so, the price. Including the price. In this particular sample, the listing agent decided to give the agent's name, the offer price, the closing date, the deposit, and the irrevocable time. In this sample. Okay, but you can choose which one to do or not do. And, uh, and the buying agents see the same screen. And now if the buying agent wants to change their price because they see what where they stand with everybody else, then they actually go in again and they upload an amendment or upload a different offer. And then when they upload a different offer and they fill in the, fill in the data, then this information changes. As a listing agent, you don't have to you don't have to put prices. You can you can put order. You can say this is order one, two, three, four, five without giving the price. Yeah. Right? You can do that as well. And then and then but the thing here is that the, the agents aren't emailing you offers. They're not like you're, you're not on your email and your phone and send you offers and, and, and you're trying to orchestrate everything. It's all done on one platform. Question is, are you going to do it? And I, my answer would be no if I'm the listing agent because I don't want a, I don't want this situation. I don't, think, I don't necessarily want. I want to get the most money for my client. I don't think this is the way to do it. How many I think I think this is great for buyers, but if I'm the listing agent, I'm not so sure I want to do that. But how many are they going to be able to capable of using that platform? I don't know. So it's a fee. Okay, and then work from the, the fee I've read, I, I, the guy's trying to talk to me and, and what's going on. I say, how much? How much is, well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, tell you. Okay, fine. But anyway, what I read is it's $50 a month, but I can't see anybody doing $50 a month. You're going to pay $600 a year for multiple offers on a listing that you might do once a year, twice a year, something like that. I can't see anybody doing it. But what I did read, though, was that the listing agent could do it, and then they could give a link to a non-subscribing agent, and that non-subscribing agent can have access to this as well. That's what I read. So that's the good thing. I'm surprised they charged anything. I thought maybe that Tread might get involved, but then this is a national thing. It's not Toronto. It's right from Vancouver out to Newfoundland, right? So it's, it's right across the river out So Trev doesn't have any power, really. But it's kind of slick, though. I went through it there. It looked, looked pretty good to me. Did you go actually go through the whole thing? You could also be an observer if you're not participating, if you're just a buyer on the sidelines. If you want to see how things are going, you can now get entertained by requesting to be an observer and watch something happen on another property. So, did you actually see that after the fact or after a property sold? You can come back and see. So, let's say, let's say, has anybody done eBay? I haven't done eBay for 100 years, but. Wasn't there eBay? Wasn't there? Wasn't there bidding? Can you see bidding? Can you yes. say like this bid? And this, so I think it's the same idea. So as and I'm not even I'm not a participant. I'm not a participant. I'm just I'm just looking and seeing, right? So you can actually have observers. You can invite them by email. I think you have to invite them. It's not public. Well, I think you request to be an observer on the listing. Whether you right. And the, and the and the concept here was that if you have a listing coming up and and, the, and a future listing coming up and you want that client to see what the process looks like, you give them access to what you're doing on a, on another deal and they can see what what the deal is. Fun. You couldn't figure out how to put sold prices on realtor.ca. This one, yeah. yeah. They're still not showing realtor.ca. Why? You know, why aren't you doing that? Mm -hmm. Too hard. So for those people here, and actually here are these guys here. So what you have to do, I'm not sure you can do this or not. How do I do this? Looking at the screen. I got a QR code. Somebody wants to QR code it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so there it is there. So what you have to do if you're looking at this online, just freeze freeze the screen there and then and then snap it. I can see this pretty good. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it's pretty slick for, for multiple offer situations. So. 
and they've approved it. We're just waiting for it to be rolled out and see who, who all gets involved. All right, I'm done. Okay, so, and then Realm, just to remind you again that Realm will be coming out in September. We're telling everybody to at least use Realm. I'm using it quite a bit. Anybody else using Realm right now? Who's using Realm? So more and more people are starting to use it. I'm starting to use it every day. So the only way you can get used to something is use it. Come September, it's, the stress will be turned off. I don't expect there'll be another extension. And when your clients get set up, I, I don't know. So, I'll, okay, I'll try it again. So what I did was I set myself up. I have a separate email outside my central emails. That's I have a separate email, right? And a, an alias. So I created myself an alias. I created myself a client on, on Realm different email address, different name. And I went in there just to create a search, save the search for that client. And now I, can, I have access to Realm as a client. So I'm suggesting you guys do the same thing. But as a client, I can actually now go into Realm and I can actually search solds as well as for sales. I can actually do a search just like you can on Realm, except it won't give me the listing agent's names. I don't believe it won't give me commissions on there. It won't give me some things. But I can search for sold and I can search for sales. So if you want your clients to have that same transparency or that same access, you can do that through Realm. But experiment, experiment with yourself first, do that first. Good. Okay. Any questions? Any anybody have problems you want to talk about here? Moist has got a nice little place downtown on uh, Shooter Street, uh, 4.17 cap rate. If anybody wants to get involved in investment real estate. It's a century old place there. It's got, uh, it's a boutique. It's uh, kind of a funky little place there that, uh, that's been converted. But, uh, it's not a bad cap rate. It's a uh, residential, but it's, it's, uh, it's a residential unit, but it's, it's, it's about $3.8 million. Anybody else have anything you want to talk about? So it's a three three bedroom bungalow semi. Uh, it has an in law suite. Uh, in law in law suite. Just just everybody know here. Okay, you've got a legal base of apartment. You don't you don't advertise it as an apartment. You don't advertise it as rental. You say it has an in law suite. Separate entrance, but you don't want to put in, don't don't ever put an apartment. Don't ever say it rents for this. Don't say anything of that stuff if it's not legal. I told you about that client we had in Oshawa, right? He had an illegal base on apartment. The client advertised the uh, the place for rent. The city caught a hold of it, knocked on the door, and made him. Made him I'll, I'll exaggerate. They made him pull it up. Okay. So that's why I'm telling you, you got to be careful. I guess. And guess who gets in trouble for having a legal base on apartment? Not the guy that did it. Us. How dare you? <laughs> how dare you put an MLS? <laughs> so what's your price? Six forty nine. Hope you get seven fifty. Nice. So you did open houses while well, you're busy. But that's what this past week it was pretty bad for weather. Yeah. Anybody else talk about anything else? You want to talk about any listings to have? No, 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 no. All right, okay. Anything else going on? Got nothing going on this. So Wednesday we have our show. This is the condo one. It's being for the but the title, the condo yeah, the for stuff. Now. Yeah, we have a reason. Condo was vacant for like three years. Okay. Anything else? Okay, folks. All right. Be good. See you all next week.